So next up, we're going to be looking at using uh, render map to extract a normal map for objects. Um, and there's a few ways to do this in XSI. Uh, what we're going to be doing is actually building the render tree to extract the normal map manually. So you can actually see all the components that are involved. And uh, it kind of gives you a bit more flexibility if you want to tune that kind of pipeline. Uh, also, I just mentioned that also in NetView, we have uh, under the add-ons tab, if you go to the GPU surface effects uh, add-on, Basically, this is kind of an automated pipeline for uh, automatically extracting the normal map as well as reapplying real-time shaders with the normal map uh, to your to your low-res objects. So um, it's all there. You can check that out. Uh, we'll probably go into a bit more detail on this in another section. Uh, but for now, what we're going to do is just get a simple uh, model. So I'm going to get the character man. And we're going to use this guy for the basis of our uh, normal map extraction. So I'm just going to freeze them and freeze the modeling. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to go into render tree. And to extract the normal map, um, what you need to do is start with the vector state node. And basically through here, we can extract the normal uh, vector. There it is, the normal vector. And that basically gives us exactly what we want. Uh, it'll give us a normal um, across the surface. And what we want to be able to do to cook that into a map is, of course, uh, the vector information uh, ranges from minus 1 to 1. And what we need to do is kind of map that into color space, RGB color space, so we can actually cook it into a texture. So what we need to do is map from minus 1, 1, which is the vector range, uh, to 0 to 1, which is the RGB kind of uh, range. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, we could use a change range node and change each uh, vector, the XYZ vector, and remap them to the proper range. Uh, or we could use a couple um, vector math nodes to do this, uh, which is a little bit quicker. So the first vector math node I'm going to use, um, what I'm going to do is uh, add 1 to the original vector. So that means we go from minus 1, 1 to 0 to 2 because we're adding 1 to each vector. So I'm going to set the operation to vector input 1 plus vector input 2. Uh, so now we're at 0 to 2. Now to remap that to 0 to 1, we need to multiply uh, by 0 0.5. Or we could divide by 2. But I'm going to, in this case, it's easier just to multiply it by 0 0.5. So we get another vector math node. And what we're going to do is say vector input 1 times scalar input 1. And scalar input 1 will set to 0.5. So actually, I should rename these. That's a smart thing to do. So this one is add 1. And this one here is mult by half. Oh, i got to learn to spell here, half. And then uh, we can plug that into the surface. And we see we get a vector to color uh, converter automatically added. I'm just going to disconnect bump for a second. And if we draw a render region here, you can see that we're getting the, uh, the, the actual correct normal map. Basically, you can see uh, on the x-axis here, we're getting mostly red. Uh, on the front here, the z-axis, it's, it's fairly bluish. And then on the top, we've got green there so uh, basically you know each color represents the specific uh, no vector direction and then as it transitions from one direction to another you can see you get the proper blending of colors so uh, seems like we're good to go on that side uh, the next thing we want to do well if I actually connect uh, the bump map up I just wanted to show you that once we connect the bump map up Let's actually increase the amount here a little bit, say something like 8. So you can see we're actually computing the bump, uh, and that's affecting the normal information. So we're actually, uh, and that's, that's uh, the correct behavior, because obviously the bump map is kind of a vector input that perturbs the normal, the surface normal. So that should be reflected in the actual normal map we have. So everything's set up there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is just extract the render map. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just apply, first of all, a unique UV set to it. 
So unique UVs. Uh, I'm going to do individual poly packing. And I'm going to set this to 2048 to have s a decent resolution there. And it's good to go under the clusters and actually um, freeze the polypack operator uh, to save us some time there. Next thing we want to do is we're going to do the render mapping through a pass just to show you that we can actually use the pass to kind of manage our render map. So you can actually do the render mapping in one pass by applying the render map property through partition and then preview results on another pass. So let's just do partition new. We'll call that render map and we'll apply a render map property um, directly on the partition. So every object in the partition obviously will get the will get the render map property. So So I'm just going to give it a descriptive name there. Let's set the resolution here uh to a higher level and we'll select our uh unique UV set that we created. So everything else I believe should be good. Uh, then we can just regenerate our map. Okay, so there we go. We have our map created. Um, the next thing we're going to do now is uh, basically do the reverse process. Uh, we want to go from our RGB color space uh, back to our vector space and apply the normal map to our object.